Hello everyone on the internet and thanks for tuning in. This is Ryu Kiba from Ryu Kiba Toku with another Toku unboxing. So today is special one of two. I am going to be looking at Garo. Uh, this is the original SH regards Shintoku Seiho release of Saijima Koga. I'm quite excited for this one. I spent 15,000 yen getting this one new. Admittedly, you could probably get it for about nine, ten thousand yus, and maybe eleven if you're in Japan itself. So I decided to spend a little bit more on this one just to get it imported as new. But obviously, I did inspect the seals the moment it came in. So looking at the box, we've got a nice. So again, I made sure this was again one. Firstly, the original Garrett, because there's about three or four different versions of this out right now. But this is the original side of Makoga without a cape. I believe he's got like chains and stuff. But you look at the front, you can tell it's definitely the chrome one with nice flaming sword. We've got some details on here. So this was done in 2005, Project Garo. Oh, actually, no, Bandai 2018 made in China. So several years after the original Garo series was aired, got Tamashii Nation, Bandai logo. I hope that says Saiji Makoga. You got, well, you got Garo Saijima Koga written on one side, second side, SH Figure Arts, not too sure, but we've got a reflective Tamashii Nation logo there, SH Figure Arts, Japanese there. On the back, uh, let's see, yeah, you got the chain that I talked about, sword, him posing, and then your deets are on the back, warning age 15 and up, let's not forget, barcode, numbers, more Japanese. So, moment of truth, I really hope this is in mint condition at least. Because again, you can buy seals anywhere really. But again, I have bought this on the assumption that it's new. So, let's have a look. So again, you always get two seals that both need to be done. So, bob on. Let's have a look. So, on the inside, ooh, uh, we've got SH Regards. This model is designed on the concept of realism. A reproduction of a heroic figure with a skirt and core made by Shinchoku Seiho. That's written in English, which is quite cool. Uh, it kind of gives, and again, unlike the other Kamen Rider Seihos, that bit of cardboard is actually attached to the box. So, Ogun, Ogon Kishigaro. I've never heard that word before, but Koga Saijima. Yes, we know who he is. Uh, QR code. I mean, I don't normally take note of the fact that these Seiho instructions will have a QR code on the back as well as, again, your Japanese got survey. So it's a questionnaire survey, I believe. So we, apparently we've got four pairs of hands. That's a four hands on each arm. Basically says you can put some of the hand B with the sword or hand G says warning delicate and it shows that the sword comes apart so let's have a look i'm actually going to squat down for this one oh don't we there we go right so that that's some mat that must be a hell of a lot of plastic going on but that's definitely ridiculously shiny gold uh right yeah that is a lot of plastic going on wow i mean this must Oh my god, this, right, well, it's a bit rock, rocky on that top torso there, just removing a lot of plastic, I mean, it looks good, it looks very shiny, I mean, you know, it's chrome, something's just fallen off, uh, right, I believe it's got a buckle on the rear, but then the chrome's already started coming off, which is a bit rubbish um oh i'm starting a bit i'm starting to feel a little bit concerned but again that plastic's really stuck in his butt there mm -hmm. right so i'm gonna put that buckle back on but apart from where the where that chrome is supposed to be concealed i'll have a look right so it's a very specific angle that goes on i mean i like the rubbery texture that goes in between the gold gold chrome platelets I guess still trying to get that plastic out of his belt uh, right mm-hmm I mean 
Right, so those shot I mean the shoulder pads that almost looks like a sort of Dragon Ranger green MMPR shield. Never really looked at it properly before if I'm honest. Yeah, like I mean I've what yeah, you know, like I do like the like Garrow series one and two was by far the best. Uh, so I'm still working through Garrow vs. Road, which finished airing a few weeks ago as of this taping. But, um, again, like, anything that was between Series 3 and vs... Oh, series 3 to whatever was before Versus Road was poor, in my opinion. But I did like... You know, aside from Koga, the character was pretty cool. But I think, like most people, I did prefer Zero. Jinga, amazing character. If they ever do a Jinga SHF... I'm sure to jump right on that. Right, so now that I believe I've got all the plastic off, let's have a look. So you've got a really good head mold there. Re uh, try to get the camera there. Right, good head mold. Uh, I mean, he's got some decent detailing in the helmet, but where he goes silver, it's like, is that faded chrome or is it supposed to be deliberate? But I'm looking at, I believe all the silvery bits are deliberate. Uh, good again, good detailing on that dragon shield style thing, but it re I don't know, I don't quite get that. Maybe it's for posing later on, I guess. Uh, arm, I mean, again, the arm movement is re is ridiculously hindered by that shield thing. Uh, I mean, the sharp bits aren't that sharp, for honest, but I do like the golden fists that are attached already. Not the greatest movement, but better than you know, better than some things. And again, you'd normally attach a cape there, but this version I know does not have a cape. Uh, yeah, I mean that is, I mean, like, I mean, what was I doing at the beginning of this video? Beginning, right? So, like, again, it's a bit rickety there, but in general, it feels all right. It feels quite flex. It feels flexible. So looking at the inner thighs, I mean, sometimes paint comes away there, but there's no paint there anyway. So that's a bonus, I guess, considering the back end. Like, these kneecaps are quite unusual. I like that. And the shins really do look nice, as well as his footwear. He's got, like, one sharp claw, which I don't know how I feel about that. Stat that's quite bendy for a toe, admittedly. Right. Let's check out the balancing. Right, so this is like, again, he's quite weird without his sword because you don't really see him in fist fights. Um, but yeah, that I'd say the balancing's good slash standard. I mean, nothing really outstandish on that. I'll zoom in for you. Right, so, let, right, so let's see. So again, just tons of plastic. So let's see what's going on. Ooh, I mean, so we've got, <laughs> there he goes. I hope I haven't damaged the chrome. Right, so we've got, so basically you've got the sword just as a sword and then the sheath with a sword in it. But I believe that if I look, so basically that's a bit of a cheat because I'd have probably preferred that sort of being able to go into that sheath. But you bet, I see what they've done here. It's clever, but I'd have preferred them to have just been like, you could have put that in there without that. Uh, da, 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 da. Nothing else in here. Right, so hopefully. We get to see some good detail in. Right. So, of course, Garrow would not be Garrow without the Garrow sword. I mean, there's so many stories across six, eight series in relation to this sword. It's really slim. I mean, I could snap that so easily. I'd have probably preferred it to have been a bit more heavy duty, if I'm honest. The handle's pretty heavy duty. Well, it's not the... I mean, again, you could snap that so easily. So even when I start putting this sword in Garrow's hand, I still feel I've got to be careful with that. But the detailing's pretty cool and really shiny. Um, yeah, I'll give it. I'll give the design its due, but I think that's probably more to do. I, yeah, I'd say the recreation's pretty cool. Now I am always snapping links on my key rings and stuff, and that that feels flimsy like anything. But of course, if you look at the photos, it all looks good. So that's what they mention in. Actually, even reading the instructions, they say that this is delicate, but that that is how that should feel. So that's got some good weight to it, admittedly. But, hmm. Right, so I'm going to have a look at some hats. So let's see how these hands pop off. Standard, standard ball joint in the wrists. 
pretty easy off. And again, I'm I'm genuinely liking this figure, even though it's. I mean, what could I improve on this figure? Well, again, I mean, wow. I mean, I didn't really analyse the back. I mean, you've got some. I mean, the back of his thighs looks really amazing. I can't say I noticed that in the series. Again, normally he wears a cape. That yeah, I'm more familiar with Gary wearing a cape, or you just see him fighting from the front in the series. But looking at the back, there's actually so much detail going on. The engraving in the back of his shield. I mean, you got some engraving in the front as well. I mean, that front chest plate. I pro it just feels weird. Like he's got these silver. He's got like nipples there and then like headlight nipples a little further out which kind of seems a bit weird but that belt is very key to the series that's still a ridiculous amount of detail and even where it goes less chrome into the inner back that like the arch of the back still pretty good not too sure what's going on with his butt though i mean again he, this guy is plated to the nines right so let's put one hand on this is like a sort of Ow, that, there's so much sharpness now that I'm trying to put this hand on. Like, all that is starting to feel really sharp. Right, so, click that in. That's quite a, that quite a rubbery feel to it. That back gold, that back plate just likes falling off. That's very dis, ugh. I like, you know, again, it's got that, you know, it doesn't feel like weak used. So I can definitely feel the newness, the newness in this figure. Alright, so again, the sword is actually it. Look, it's actually a very two-scale sword. It's not like an anime sword like a lot of the figures have, i.e., G Shinkenja, or like a couple of the Kamen Riders. But no, the sword is you know it looks like a sensible sword. Alright, so a, a typical pose would be him sort of flying out of horror with the sword, I don't know how that looks on camera. I'm not gonna have him on one tip. I mean, again, the bat is pretty good, but I don't think it'd be that good. I could probably try it right. That kneecap's just come off. All right, so it goes like that. So, no, but at least there's a good peg in the kneecap. So, again, that's where I am being quite demanding of his flexibility there. So even though this would be the typical pose he'd do, and yeah, I'm doing it as if he's standing on ground doing that. So balancing on one leg, I mean, again, I seem to do this once every so often. Like, but again, I, I'm loving the chrome. I'm loving the engraving work. Yeah, and again, I didn't even know he had such detailed thighs. Just shows how much I pay attention to the show, but again, it's been a while since I've seen well, series one, series two, the ones that I liked. I mean, if I'm honest, like season three and five, the one with Vol City Garrow, didn't like that one. And you know, so yeah, there was what there was two series, I believe, with Saiju Makoga's son, wasn't a fan of that one either. And then they did like Retsuden or something that was like a recap series. It's like, why, why would you turn a whole series into a clip show? I mean, the movies are pretty good. Ugh, that was so close to being right. So, uh, 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 I don't know why I'm trying to do such a pose. Right, I'll, I'm going to change the pose. Right. So I'm feeling a little bit of sort of real bendiness. And like, actually, I could, I've just noticed that the, the joints in Garrow's ankles are like a sort of chocolatey yellow. They're, right, that's a semi-decent pose, I guess. I'd probably prefer to use the action stage to have him doing that in the air. But just to do one more pose, because uh, there's nothing in the instructions about the one with the sheath being able to, you know, like you'd expect the sheath to be able to clip there. I mean, you look at the back of the, the back of the box. That's the back of the box. You just see him hold. I mean, uh, I'll see what the other hand looks like. So basically, you got one. You got a pair of fists. You got open hands, you got sword holding hands, and then, yep, sheath holding hands. It's like, so that's what, that explains the four pairs of hands. But the sheath holding hand is going on his right. So actually that, considering that was a very impulsive pose, I think that looks pretty good.